ranking the top 25 weapons in Call of Duty history. The COD community is extremely loud with their opinions when content creators rank anything. And I thought, why not have the community rank them instead? So with that in mind, I made a Call of Duty weapon tournament where first I had the community vote for the top four guns from every COD. After that, I made over a hundred polls where each one had two COD weapons face off directly with each other to have a winner. And these polls ended up having about 2 million votes. This means the sample size is large enough to make this video pretty accurate to the overall community's feelings about guns. And with all the results compiled together, this is the community's rankings of the top 25 weapons in COD history. 25. The M8A1 from Black Ops 2. This was the first four round burst AR in Call of Duty and it was an absolute menace. What makes a burst weapon good is the ability to take people out with one burst and at close range the M8 only took three shots to kill which means you didn't even have to hit the full burst making it incredible. But after that first range it killed in four to five shots. And an interesting part about the M8 was that it had no headshot multiplier meaning there wasn't much of a skill gap with it. You just aimed it at the torso and it deleted people. And with it being so easy to use I'm shocked at how low it finished, but one thing you notice throughout this video is that the community likes fully automatic weapons just a little bit better than the bursts and semi-auto ones. 24, the AK-74U from Cold War. We got our first weapon from a more recent Call of Duty, and I was very curious how weapons would finish from these games because there were so many buffs and nerfs to their weapons. And with this one, it had a bunch of damage ranges changing the shots to kill anywhere from 4 to 6. They were pretty much set in stone there because it took 3 shots at all ranges to lower the shots to kill. And just like the M8, it makes this weapon easier to use, as its main strength is its absurdly fast time to kill at close range. It has a very solid fire rate of 697 rounds per minute, which is a sweet spot because it doesn't fire too slowly where it hurts your time to kill, if you miss shots, and it doesn't fire fast enough to make your recoil kick up more. This one is just an SMG that fits perfectly into a hybrid role of half assault rifle and half sub. This is why the AK-74U is always a popular weapon no matter which Call of Duty it's in. And speaking of that, 23, the AK-74U from Black Ops 1. What I said for the Cold War version can mainly be applied to the original AK-74U in COD. It's a high damage SMG that tied with the MP5K for the highest damage SMG in Black Ops 1. And it could take people out at close range in only 3 shots or 2 to the head giving it a high potential. It not only killed in less bullets than its Cold War counterpart, it also shot a little bit faster at 750 rounds per minute. But it got even better if you ran this weapon with a grip and rapid fire that made it stupidly good. Black Ops 1 was a game dominated by its assault rifles, but the 74U was the one SMG to truly compete with them. This video has been in the works for nearly 5 months, so please leave a like if you want to see more community rankings. 22. The ASM-1 from Advanced Warfare. I know people will immediately think of the speakeasy because of it increasing the fire rate and making it way too good. But in this tournament, I had people ignore the variants and vote based on the base versions only, which is why this one didn't finish higher. But don't knock this weapon because it's still ridiculously good and has a unique weapon mechanic with its fire rate. It starts off by shooting at 750 rounds per minute and slowly lowers down to 674 over the first eight shots. This made it important to take out your enemies within those first handful of bullets, but with it only taking three shots to kill, it wasn't too hard to accomplish that. And as someone who never got the speakeasy, I'm glad the base variant was still good. I'm doing a face reveal at 100k, so hit that button if you want to see me or just want to support me. I really appreciate it. 21, the AS Val from Modern Warfare 2019. This weapon might be one of the most broken things ever and I thought it would finish higher. I actually started this gameplay with no attachments on it and I was still playing great. But once I fixed my setup and added the attachments to give me 30 bullets, less recoil and more mobility, I never died again. This AR felt like the best SMG ever up close while also feeling like an extremely slow movement assault rifle with the exception of having a really good aim down sight speed. It was the weirdest thing, but with high damage making it a 3 shot kill and a fast fire rate of 923 rounds per minute, nothing killed faster making it a fan favorite in multiplayer and warzone alike. This weapon was just a weird combination of things that just happened to work out great. And leave a comment now on what gun you think will win as the community's top pick. Then let me know what gun you think should win. I'm curious of your opinions. 20. The FAL OSW from Black Ops 2 This is my first major disagreement with the list. Do I think some of the other weapons should be moved up or down? Yeah, but they're still in the right range, whereas the FAL OSW should be moved way higher onto this list. As I said with the M8A1, 
people did not like voting for the great non-automatic weapons. The FAO was banned from competitive immediately and was not wholly broken in its semi-auto form, but also with the select fire attachment that allowed you to make it full auto and easier to use for lesser skilled players. The semi-auto fire cap was high enough to allow you to spam the trigger as fast as you wanted and it only took two shots to kill. Even though the M8A1 and another unnamed gun that will be shown in this video were my most used guns in Black Ops 2, I knew that the FAL was the best one. 19. The M4A1 from Modern Warfare 2019 You can never go wrong with an M4, it's just a classic assault rifle that's easy to use. It typically never is the best weapon in the game, but it's always a fan favorite. Maybe because it's always an early unlock and one of the first guns people use. This M4 was unlocked at level 6 and unlike most of them, it was the best assault rifle at launch. It has a really good fire rate at 809 rounds per minute, but slightly lower damage than usual making it a 4 shot kill. But the reason people like like M4s is because they're solid all-around weapons that do everything pretty well, which allows you to play any style you want with it. The versatility is why it's good. 18. The MP5 from Modern Warfare 2019 Yep, that's the third weapon from this game in the last four. And we just talked about the M4 being a classic, but I don't know if there's another weapon in more Call of Duties than the MP5. There has not been one single game where this gun hasn't been at least an above average SMG. And what's weird about this one is that it fires slower than the M4A when we just talked about it's 798 rounds per minute with a higher damage of 30. An interesting difference between the two is that the M4A1 had a faster reload time of 1.39 seconds to the MP5's 1.7. I just found that funny. And of course the MP5 has faster mobility stats across the board, which is nice, but I think it got voted above the M4A1 because of how much better it was in Warzone. And this tournament was focused on multiplayer, but it's hard for people to block out their memories of dominating Battle Royale with it. 17, the Galil from Black Ops 1. This game was dominated by ARs with all of them being loved and used a lot outside of the poor infield. And that one was still all right. I don't think there are many more iconic things in Call of Duty outside of a silenced Galil. For some reason, it just fits so well together. And the 35 round mag was so nice. Even though it's just five more bullets than the rest of the ARs, it was a nice advantage paired with its fast reload. It was a three shot kill with a 750 round per minute fire rate and no recoil. Anyone could use this gun and have a good game. I don't know how to describe it other than it just felt exactly how an assault rifle should. And I hope one day they bring back a Galil that can give this one justice. 16, the AK-47 from COD 4. If it wasn't for that one weapon you'll see later, this would have been the best gun in COD 4 easily. This is what began people's love of the AK-47 in Call of Duty, with it being good in almost every iteration. It was a high damage gun that hit people like a truck, and when you added stopping power to it, it became truly disgusting and two-shotting people across the map while still firing at over 700 rounds per minute. Let's just say the early CODs didn't do the greatest job balancing their games. 15. The PPSH from World at War Similar to the AK we just talked about, this weapon, if not for one other SMG, would be remembered more. But unlike the AK, it did not hit you hard, but hit you quickly with an insane fire rate of 1250 rounds per minute. Yep, you heard that right. So even though it took five shots to kill, it still dropped people. And if you paired it with the 70 round drum, it was incredible. Normally when you hear of a weapon shooting that fast, you think there's gonna be a lot of recoil, but you'd be mistaken with this one because the gun had zero kick. This weapon could compete with that other SMG from World at War because it was more accurate. Also, it was amazing in zombies, but that wasn't included in the voting. 14, the Honey Badger from Ghosts. This is one of the most popular weapons in Call of Duty because of that little integrated suppressor. It was incredible because it had a faster fire rate of 800 rounds per minute and was only a three to five shot kill. That probably seems like it would have an insane time to kill, but almost every ghost weapon had a crazy TTK. That was just how they wanted their games to work. Giant maps with fast time to kills, which is why it was really campy. But just like everyone else, I loved the Honey Badger because it felt so smooth. And the interesting thing is that the MTAR X SMG was only a three to four shot kill with a slightly faster fire rate of 810 rounds per minute. And it also had similar levels of recoil, but it didn't make the list. The Remington R5 and AK-12 also didn't make the list, even though they were higher damage weapons with less recoil and more range. I think the suppressor is the main reason for why this gun was so beloved, because objectively looking at it, the Honey Badger was an OP, just on par with the other good guns and ghosts. 13, the FAMAS from Black Ops 1. I have three rankings I strongly disagree with on this list, and this is the second one. Somehow, in some way, this isn't the highest rated weapon from Black Ops 1 in this video. It was nerfed twice, and this is before nerfs were a thing in Call of Duty. If that 
doesn't tell you something, I don't know what does. And even after the double nerf, it was still the best gun in the game. And what did they do when they nerfed it? They added a little bit of recoil to make it slightly harder to use, but it didn't really matter because even if you were bad, the 937 round per minute fire rate made sure you didn't get penalized much for missing a shot or two. It also only took three shots to kill. Everyone during Black Ops 1 lifecycle knew the game was dominated by assault rifles and everyone knew the FAMAS was the best one. But I guess some of the community has forgotten that. 12, the Man of War from Black Ops 3. I loved this weapon. It had a slower fire rate for an AR at 517 rounds per minute, but it hit hard with the best range of any assault rifle in Black Ops 3. So while some of the weapons like the KN-44 were more effective up close than the Man of War, no other assault rifle was as good at mid-range, which is a specialty of this weapon class. And for some reason, the COD Wiki says it was a high recoil weapon, but as you can see by this gameplay, it's extremely easy to hit your shots. Two weapons can have the same exact level of recoil, but the one that shoots faster will always feel like it kicks more because of how recoil works in Call of Duty. Each bullet fired gives the gun recoil, so the faster it shoots, the faster the recoil is applied to the gun. So even though it might have had some extra kick per shot, it was easy to control because of how slow it fired. It was also nice that you need to hit less bullets to take out players in a game with jetpacks. It was very useful. And speaking of taking less bullets, 11, the Brecci from Black Ops 3. It took two to three shots at all ranges and couldn't one shot as a shotgun, which might seem bad, but not for this semi-automatic beast. A weird fact is that the Brecci has the highest headshot multiplayer in Black Ops 3 at 1.4x, but that still couldn't make it one shot, although it was still useful at its max range to make it two shots instead of three. The Brecci was extremely effective up close with hipfire and was still extremely effective at range while aimed down sight. And you might wonder why, and that's because the pellet spread when ADS'd almost became like a slug round because it became so compact. This was a big reason why if one person used a Brecci in a lobby, then everyone switched to it. The Brecci wasn't loved because it was too good and too easy to use, where even bad players could smoke you with it, but it was still fun to troll with from time to time. 10. The AN-94 from Black Ops 2 This assault rifle just felt satisfying to use. It might be because of the fire rate being unique by having the first two shots shoot at 900 rounds per minute, then the rest shooting at 600. So if you tap fired it, you could continuously get those two shots shooting at 900 rounds per minute. One other weird thing is that the recoil was lower on those first two shots. And it was a three to five shot kill, but at mid range where it was four shots, all you had to do was hit one headshot to make it go back down to three, which made it great and beat pretty much every gun. Then those iron sights were just so nice to look at. And how it reloads looks great too. Just using your new mag to knock out the old one, maybe that's why it's satisfying as well. My opinion is the an 94 a good weapon for everyone, but it could be great for those who master the timing of tap firing it to get that 900 round per minute fire rate. 9. The MP7 from Modern Warfare 3 Some viewed this as the best weapon from MW3, and rightfully so, even if I disagree. The MP7 is one of the best SMGs in Call of Duty history, and is always good no matter which COD it's in. This SMG was so dominant that if it was used in Call of Duty today, no one would use another gun because the strict skill based matchmaking wouldn't allow them to. Its fire rate was 895 rounds per minute which is on the higher end without being ridiculous but what makes it broken was that it basically had no recoil and it had zero horizontal kick which makes it incredibly easy to use and if you pair that with the clean iron sights that have no sway you're going to be hitting every single shot then it also has a base mag of 40 rounds making an extended mag an unnecessary attachment which is really useful when you could only have two of them at max in this game. The MP7 was elite because every single category, it was at least above average. Eight, the BAL 27 from Advanced Warfare. This thing was so good that the community changed the name of the game to Bal of Duty. And if I included variants in this tournament, the Obsidian Seed might have won the whole thing. But the base BAL was still great and was almost like a reverse AN94 where its first shot shoots slower and it ramps up over time, meaning this gun was awful for tap firing and you should be holding down that trigger. Another unique feature of it is that its hip fire was very good for an assault rifle and was actually better than most SMGs. And that's the main reason why it's so good is that it was the best SMG and the best assault rifle in the game at the same exact time. Like most of the good weapons, it has good iron sights and lower recoil, 
People love weapons that don't take too much effort to be good with. Seven, the Commando from Black Ops 1. My favorite comment from this entire tournament was someone saying the Commando was so good, they had to put a seatbelt on it. But as I said earlier, it makes no sense this weapon was voted higher than the FAMAS. But I'm not counting this as my third big disagreement, because it goes hand in hand with my FAMAS one, where I just think these two should be flipped in the rankings. Even though I love this weapon along with the community, I need to further make my point. The Commando had the same exact fire rate and damage of the Galil and AK-47. Even that infield that no one loved has the same fire rate and shots to kill, but unlike the other three, you couldn't lower the shots to kill with headshots. The Galil even had five more shots in the bag with a little less recoil, and somehow the Commando got ranked higher than the Galil still. The AK-47 didn't make the cut, and the FAMAS, which fired nearly 200 rounds per minute faster and still took the same shots to kill, is ranked below it. But I can answer why two of those three things happened. First, it has better handling stats than the Galil with aim down sight speed, hip fire, and reload. Second, the AK-47 had more visual recoil even though it isn't actually moving anymore. But looking at this objectively, it still doesn't make any sense being at 7 above the FAMAS. The Commando got voted for because it's the M4 of Black Ops 1 and looks really cool. P.S. I still really like it and think it deserved to be in the top 25, I just had to make my point. 6. The UMP45 from Modern Warfare 2. Now this SMG being voted this highly makes perfect sense. With stopping power equipped, this thing would two shot across the entire map. So even with a slower base fire rate, it could destroy SMGs and assault rifles at all ranges. But if you equipped rapid fire, it would be unstoppable if you could control that extra recoil. But personally, I still enjoyed using this thing with a suppressor instead because I could keep off the mini map and be more precise with my shots. And it has an argument to be even higher on this list. Five, the intervention from Modern Warfare 2. This thing is arguably the most iconic weapon in Call of Duty and is 100% the reason it was voted for. And here comes the butt with the third big disagreement of the video. Objectively looking at it, this is just flat out wrong. Statistically, it wasn't even the best sniper in Modern Warfare 2. It had identical stats to the Barrett 50 Cal, except for fire rate, where we all know the Barrett fired way faster. But of course, the intervention sounded better and felt better to use while being the number one montage weapon in Call of Duty. I love the intervention, but it just isn't the fifth best gun objectively. However, it did impact the Call of Duty franchise more than any other gun probably, so I'll let this one slide. Four, the MP40 from World at War. It has a lot of similar traits the UMP-45 from Modern Warfare 2, so you may wonder what the difference is. The biggest thing is the rest of the weapons in World at War weren't nearly as good as the rest of the guns in Modern Warfare 2, making the MP-40 stand out just a bit more. And one of the weirdest things that I've never seen on any other weapon in Call of Duty history is that the MP-40 has different close range damage on the PC to the consoles. On console, the MP-42 shot out to 19 meters without stopping power, allowing you to run Juggernaut or Double Tap, but on PC, you needed stopping power to get that two shot kill at close range. Why would they do that? But an extra perk to the MP40 was that 64 round extended mag that gave you the ability to take out an entire team without ever needing to reload. I will say it did have a bit of recoil, but it was more overpowered in World at War than almost any other gun in Call of Duty. Three, the ACR from Modern Warfare 2. When a gun company signs a contract to put the adaptive combat rifle into your game, you make sure it's a good one. It was a low damage, low recoil assault rifle with slightly above average fire rate at 789 rounds per minute. And just like the UMP-45, stopping power was key on turning this from a good weapon to one of the best. It lowered the shots to kill at close and long range from four to five to three to four, which then changed it from a low damage gun into one that hit harder than the Man of War while firing almost 200 rounds per minute faster. So what I'm getting from these Modern Warfare 2 weapons is that they might be showing that stopping power is really the most powerful weapon in all of Call of Duty history. Two, the ACR 6.8 from Modern Warfare 3. This one was my personal pick for the best gun in Call of Duty, and you may wonder why why it got voted above the old ACR and it's for one simple reason. It has higher damage than the MW2 version even after you added stopping power to it. And on top of that, one headshot lowered its shots to kill to two to three bullets at all ranges while maintaining the incredibly low recoil. It also improved upon the iron sights. And lastly, the MW3 weapons were less overpowered as a whole 
making only a couple weapons truly stand out as the top dogs. As you know, my channel name is Ascend AR, and the AR at the end of it are my initials, but what some of you may not know is that my full initials are ACR, which always made me love this weapon, and is what I got most of my MOABs with in Modern Warfare 3. Very quickly before I reveal number one, I want to tell you the weapons that just missed the cut at 26 to 30 in the tournament. With the VMP from Black Ops 4, the MP5 from COD 4, the MSR from Modern Warfare 3, the HBR 3 from Advanced Warfare, and lastly, the BAR from COD World War 2. And I'm curious if there are any weapons you think should have made the list but were left off. I'm going to give you my top 5 left off weapons with the LC-10 from Cold War, which I think was better than the 74U. The FAMAS from Modern Warfare 2, people really didn't like voting for non-automatic weapons. The 725 from MW 2019, I hated that thing, but come on, that thing was stupidly good. The KBAR 32 from Infinite Warfare, people just didn't play it or hated the game. And lastly, the MSMC from Black Ops 2. Now let's get the community's number one gun in COD history. The M16 from COD 4. Congratulations to all those who guessed correctly and congrats to the M16. The first overpowered gun in Call of Duty gets the top spot. This was the only burst or semi-automatic weapon to get the respect it deserves. It was so overpowered because it had no recoil while hitting like a truck. Stopping power made it one burst at every single range, which is just plain unfair because the burst fire rate was 937 rounds per minute. Meaning if you didn't shoot a second burst, nothing in the game could beat it at any range other than a good sniper shot. And up close, you don't even need to hit three shots from the burst, only two. It was the first gun where people got called to try hard for using it, and the first time people realized that COD might have a problem balancing their game. But the thing is, people weren't as sweaty back then, and it wasn't a big problem during COD 4's life cycle. That's a new issue with COD. And click here for the community's multiplayer rankings. I know you'll enjoy it. Peace.